Good YouTube Quinn Way coming to y'all with some free agent analysis tonight. Um, the Spurs and the Kings officially completed their trade on Tuesday, and basically the Kings was sent McDaniel's cash. Well, the Kings end up sending McDaniel's cash and the Kings unprotected 2031 second round pick to San Antonio in exchange. For the Bulls, top 55 protected 2025 second-round pick. And Sacramento also created a $4.74 million trade exception, which can come in handy as they're trying to win with DeMar DeRozan, De'Aaron Fox, and DeMond Sabonis. And the Spurs, who cut Isaiah Miller in order to complete the trade, they also attend to waive McDaniels, but they actually did that now. And that's the final level of that trade was, you know, the Spurs got exactly what they wanted. And Sacramento was able to save some money and be able to also gain ability to make a move if they need it by using a regular season to see if they have the pieces that they want going forward. They can always make a, a minor move to get another guy that can help them out. And it makes sense for them to make that move because that's all the second round pick is going to be is a guy that can either contribute or a guy that might not have that much longevity in the league. And by them being wing and guard heavy already on their roster, it makes a lot of sense for them to get rid of guys that they don't really want. Same with the Spurs. They have a lot of guards on their roster and it don't really make sense to add another one, especially when you have needs for other positions. And it just, you know, unfortunate for McDaniels, who show, was showing some progress and wasn't able to c complete that, you know, with the Spurs or with, with the um, Kings. But at least he has the opportunity to sign with the team he wants to sign with, possibly. But the NBA can be cutthroat, as we know. And he was just the latest victim of that, unfortunately. And then I would also say the Orlando Magic agreed to a contract extension with the center, Wendell Carter on Monday. Um, the deal is for three years, $59 million, And I think that that's a good deal for Wendell Carter because he's shown that he is a, a starting caliber center, which we knew when they drafted him that he had the potential to be that type of guy. So it's not really a surprise to me that he ended up being that type of guy so many years into his career. And when you hear the name Will Carter Jr., you kind of forget that he's only 25 years old. He's not really that old to begin with. And he's a guy that can give you double-figure points. He also can give you, you know, respectable rebounds, you know, depending on who's in that front lineup with him in that front court. And he's a guy that can also shoot the three when needed. He's not a high-volume three-point shooter, but he shoots enough to keep the defense honest. He's able to finish with strength and force. He always been a decent rim finisher. You hope he can get you know better at it a little bit more um, and be more efficient at it. But when you're trying to do multiple things and you're still trying to finish at the paint, you know obviously it can be tough. But by him being six ten and two sixty two, he got an NBA body, real strong, real smart, sets real great screens to get teammates open. Um, just understands the game at a, a, a good level. And he also plays the right way, which is team basketball. He's not selfish. He's not trigger happy. And he's also a guy that can be, you know, a decent rim protector when needed. You know, he's not the greatest, not the fastest, not the quickest, but he gets the job done if you put the right team around him. And I think that that's what the Magic have been doing, and they like him what they have been able to see, especially with a dribble handoff game too. And it'll show you that he's the perfect fit. And he reminded me a little bit of Joe Kim Noah coming out of the draft. A guy that's going to do all the dirty work and not complain about it. It just, we have to see Wendell Carter more healthier. He hasn't been as healthy as you really need him to be since he is a starter for the most part. For the teams that he's been on in his early career, he just hasn't been able to stay on the floor enough. And you know what he can do. You know how good he is when he is on the floor. Remember, he was a, a seventh pick in that 2018 draft. So it just makes sense for people to still believe that he can get it done because he has proven that since, you know, he's been in the league for a couple years. And it is going to be interesting to see can he stay healthy for 60-plus games or more 
because the Magic are trending upwards and you don't want to see him lose his spot to somebody else because he can't stay healthy when he really deserves to be in the league. Um, but, you know, the center position can be very physical. It can be very tough. You slapping and banging and pushing and tugging and grabbing just for rebounds and trying to finish and protect the paint. And he did the best he could so far, and I like what he's doing. And I feel like he has honestly earned his contract. And three years, $59 million is not a crazy amount of money. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not something that you're going to regret giving him, especially a team like that that already has who they – have on a roster and all of them on rookie contracts already. I don't really see them getting stung by that contract that they just gave Wendell Carter. And another player that got something respectable too is Jose Alvarado. You know he's going to push the pace. You know he's going to create chaos when he gets on the court. You know he's going to play in the passing lanes. You know he's going to try to strip guys. You know he's going to try to barrage scoring or get into the basket, shooting threes, facilitating for fast octane um, pace games and that's his job you know is to come in and play his game and contribute to, to the game as much as he can but the new Orleans pelicans gave um jose alvarado a two-year nine million dollar extension remember he is the backup point guard for the most part and he is a little tiny he is a little small but they do see him being a difference maker whenever he's on a court and i would say that makes a lot of sense because he really is that good of a player and he always has been and they like him because he's a crowd player too. If he's getting going, he, he makes the crowd believe and he makes them go wild and that's what you need sometime is a spark plug. And I feel like Jose, Jose Alvarado has been that. You wish you could get him for a couple more years because he is that good of a backup. It's like you want more than a two-year extension, but – if we had to be honest, if he plays the way he's been playing, I just see him getting more of them. I expect that like three years would have been better, four years would have been, be been better. He still does have to know his worth. He still has to try to play himself into something better because this is your livelihood and this is how you get paid. So you can't take that for, for granted. And I, I just like seeing, you know, people get rewarded for the way they play. But he do have a player option in that 2026-2027 um, in, in that contract. So he can play this year, next year, and just be back, you know, as a free agent, trying to see what's the best fit for him because he's going to have some suitors the way he play, especially if he can get that three-point shot going consistently. He's going to be some trouble. And then the last one I want to talk about was Moses Moody. He had a great preseason. Um, he's showing that he can score. He's showing you that he can get to the basket. He can get to the free throw line. Um, they knew that they had, they had a guy that's going to be developed into a scorer, not really a crazy shooter. He just a guy that just knows how to put the ball in the basket, and we knew that he can do those type of things. Not really much of a surprise for the Warriors to keep one of their guys under a cheap, um, affordable contract. And Moses did the right thing to cash in on that. Eight points, three rebounds. Sounds like a little bit of thing, a little bit of points, and a little bit of contribution, contributions. But if we had to be honest, when you look at a summer league, 12 points, 9 points, 23 points, 14 points, 21 points, 14 points, 50%, 50%, 35%, 50%, 33%, 44%. And from threes, he didn't shoot none in one game. Uh, but he was 0 for 3, 62%, 40%, 33%, 33%, and 40%. In the other game, he did shoot threes. He just missed all three of them. I bad on that. But he also was able to get some rebounds in that game, and he also was able to get some steals in certain games. And I like what he has done as a player, and I feel like they sh they seem like they like him as a locker room player. They like him as a, as a guy that – can come in and they respect him when he's out there with the starters too. But when you shooting 43%, 47%, and 46% for your career, and you shooting around league average from three, um, and you do need to make your free throws more often, but he doesn't attempt that many because he is only playing a certain amount of minutes, not even 20 minutes a game. I think that he has been real decent. I, I like Moses Moody. I don't really have anything negative to say about him. But as he just comes in and has that next man up vitality, 
and he really does understand that <laughs> this is the guy I might be in the NBA, and this is the guy that I might be at the highest level. And <laughs> as long as I get my minutes, as long as I get my opportunity, as long as I can play with some of the greatest players in the game and some of the best players in the world, which is the starters, I'm cool with that, you know. And that's the way you have to look at it sometimes. If you play the game and you see what level you can get to, now it's just about surviving and having fun and playing competitive basketball and trying to win again. Remember, he already won a championship ring too. So, you know, <laughs> he got it don't going young and early, and now he gets a big, fat extension that's going to be able to give him generational wealth, and he earned it. So there's nothing negative I can say about that. But congratulations to all the guys that got their extensions and all the guys that, you know, fought through adversity, fought through the chaos, you know, created something positive out of what they do, making sure they're living their life that they deserve because this is the lifestyle they work for. And all I can say is continue to play great basketball to the best of your ability and stay healthy. Because some of these guys haven't been able to stay healthy, and that's one of the reasons why their extensions haven't really been something that teams prioritize. Because they have to do that wait and see approach, which is always going to make you nervous and is always going to make you wonder. And these guys don't have to do that no more because they got it done. Now we got to see the next wave of players that's going to have the same type of pressure to get a deal done that's fair for both sides. And they can hopefully stay with the team that they're more comfortable with um, like these guys on, on this video. So comment, like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell for more analysis. If you like the analysis, especially for the NBA, this is the channel for you as I have over 2,000 plus videos. So if you like this video, check out my older videos. Got breakdowns, got breakdown tributes, got conversations just like this. And if you already been subscribed to the channel, you want more analysis, I got videos that you may have missed because I upload throughout the day, a couple videos throughout the day, throughout the months, throughout the year. So there's always something you may have missed that you wanted to see. And this is just a reminder to continue to check out my content throughout the day. And the notification bell helps too because you get it instantly right in front of you when a video is done and ready for you to see. And you got to give YouTube a lot of credit for that because they've been innovating and finding ways to keep us signed up so we can keep having everything we need to be able to give the fans what they want. And on top of that, thanks for liking, thanks for sharing, thanks for keeping the channel popular and popping. I appreciate that. You got the best fans in the world. Ain't nothing you can complain about like I do. You, all you can do is have more fun with it, and that's what these guys are going to do now that they got the contract out of the way. Now they can get back to preparing and playing basketball when the season starts. And it's all fun now. Now you just got to stay healthy, you know, for the entire season and build up your value, hopefully. Other than that, I'll see you guys later.